Well, hello and welcome to Modular Curiosity, episode 25. In this episode, this is going to be an interesting, different one. I'm not going through a module. I'm just going through these two rows of a module. Yes, this is the SOU Utilities by Ensynthi. And there's a lot of stuff in here. And in fact, these utilities are actually made, or they're designed, I should say, to supplement... Where is it? This guy, which is a random voltage uncertainty generator. And this is a module that kind of tames the output of this module. These two together are so big, it's probably going to be a two episode set of uh, episodes. But I wound up falling in love with just these two rows here to do something that I wanted to do for a while and I haven't been able to come up with a way to do. And that is how to have an arpeggio that spans beyond one octave. That is, I want a root, in this case a flat third, fifth, flat seventh, a ninth, and an eleventh. So I want this one to be an octave up from that one, and I want all the notes generated here to be within one octave, and all the notes generated here to be within an, an adjacent octave. How would we do that? Turns out the octave folder one and two make that really easy. So now let's go set up a template and start at the beginning and see how we do this. Okay, so here I have a pretty standard patch. This is simply a clock going into a sample and hold, which means uh, I'm taking random notes from the sample and hold, driving a new voltage every time this trigger hits. This trigger is hitting whenever this clock cycle hits. I'm also using the same clock to fire an ADSR. Of course, I can adjust my release, I can adjust everything else. <laughs> now, as you can hear, we have a huge range of pitches from very low to very, very high. One of the first things I would want to do is to quantize that. And one of my favorite quantizers is in ML, is the quantum. So let's say that I want to have root minor third, fifth, flat seven. So what that would mean is instead of having the voltage octave come from here, I will have the voltage per octave come from here and the output go here. Now what this is doing is, is limiting these notes of whatever voltage comes in. It's saying find the closest triggered note, that is the closest selected note to whatever random voltage is coming in. Now you can hear it's jumping in octaves all over the place, but it is a particular arpeggio. But it's still jumping all over in octaves, and I don't want it to jump in octaves. I want it to stay within a, si a single octave. So that's where the octave folder comes in. I'm gonna put my input here, take my output there. And what this is saying, let's zoom in even more. You can see the numbers here from zero to nine for the minimum, one to 10 for the maximum. And it's important that they are offset. So if I turn it down to zero to one, uh, actually let's say one to two. Let's say one to two, there we go. What this means is the pitch notation, the, pi the pitch signal here is one volt per octave. So this is saying anything which is below one, I have it zero, one right there, it will add a volt until it's above this minimum threshold. And anything that is above, in this case two, it will start subtracting a volt, subtracting a volt, subtracting a volt until it's below this threshold. So now all the signals going in here will only exist between this voltage, which in this case is one, and this maximum voltage, which in this case is two. And if I now turn on my mixer, It's all within one octave. Now, because I'm using the even VCO, I could then shift that octave quite easily. But the thing I wanted to do originally was to have 
an extended arpeggio. I wanted to have ninths and elevenths. So what that means, root, flat three, five, flat seven, ninth, eleventh. But I want this to be exactly one octave higher than this. So there's a couple ways I could do that. One of the ways I could do that is to have a second VCO, which I'm going to need anyway, and just simply kick the octave up. But I don't want both of these to fire at the same time. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to use the Bernoulli gate. And that's an audible. And what I'm going to do, have this output, let's see, not what I wanted to do. There we go. I want this output to go to here. I should move these around so it's less confusing. So the left side will be the left oscillator, which is the left quantizer to the left output. And the right side will go here. Should be hearing this. Now let's figure out why I'm not. So I have an output to here, output to there, output to retrigger, which is not where it's supposed to go. <laughs> no. That's supposed to go there. That's supposed to go here. Now, this is all over the place again. See, these octaves are all over the place. So let's take this and run it through another octave minimizer. But I'm going to set it up one octave. See, it's going to be bouncing between these two notes. Now, if I bring it back to, say, about two-thirds of the time, hit this one, and one-third of the time, hit those two, Now I have this extended arpeggio. Now what if I want this quantizer to span two octaves? Well, I can't do that here because this is just shifting by one octave. But if I want the range, the span, to be two octaves, I can now open this up one. Or I can close it down. Now, that's pretty cool. And then I had this idea of what if, <laughs> the, the, the most important question, what if, I tried to get those notes to sort of blend from one, one note to the next. And the thing that that makes me think of, and I was right there, is the resonator. Because we automatically have the capability of, with this button of say, I want two notes to play at the same, that is when one note plays it'll start ringing and when the second note plays it'll allow the first note to die out so they'll be playing at the same time essentially so let's put strum here strum there and then our voltage per octave out here out here and we'll bring that into two new channels Now, if we click again, go to the red channel, it'll allow four notes to play. I find, though, that it modifies the tone enough and it gets muddy enough that I actually prefer the yellow mode. This button, however, is amazing. We're, right now, we're on sort of the metallic bell strike sound. If we go to yellow, it's the sympathetic string sounds, my favorite sound from the resonator.
maybe let's turn it down a little bit so it's not quite so manic. Now, we have all kinds of interesting controls here with structure, position, and that sounds like we should have modulation, doesn't it? So let's put some LFOs on that. This to the left side, we want to push the attend inverter to the right side. So perhaps this attend inverter will go the other way, well, to the right and to the left. Because what's happening with this attend inverter is if we were way up here, it would say only have this voltage adjust between this setting and that setting. So essentially we're only turning that much. But if I do this, I say go from, whoops, say here to there. Position is another one that's really fun to play with. And I think I'm gonna play with a sawtooth wave. Maybe a sine wave on this one. Sounds to me like we need a reverb. Reverbs. Reverb stereo. That sounds like what I need. Left. Right in. There we go. That's just one of the ideas that you could use the octave folder for, which is basically limiting the octave of voltage outputs. Oh, I remember what we did with this oscillator. We opened the first quantizer, the first side, up to two octaves. This is just fun. Well, folks, that's it. That's the NSYNTHE SOU Utilities Scalar Offsetter Octave Folder ASR, and we're only using this part of it. This is going to be a big. This is going to be a big module to look into. That's it for episode 25. Hope you come up with your own ideas for this. And remember, uh, if you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. That does help me out. And as always, stay curious.